The Android 9.0 Pi update with Samsung's new One UI has officially made its way to the Galaxy Note 9. If you've watched our video going over the Samsung One UI on the Galaxy S9 Plus, then this video is going to be very similar, but there are a few new features that I did include in this video. So let's get started. Right away, you're going to notice the new look. The lock screen widget and always on display widget have been cleaned up a bit, and there are now some new icons in each corner for the camera and phone shortcuts. In addition to the new clock widgets for the always on display, what is also kind of neat is you can now see when the phone is charging through the always on display. This seemingly simple feature wasn't available in the past. You'll see that these stock icons are different. They're flatter, more consistently round in shape. The color palette is more modern and everything seems a bit bigger and magnified. Many of Samsung's stock apps have been updated with a new design, one that makes it much easier to navigate with one hand, even if the display of your smartphone is massive. Samsung accomplishes this by using big headers that push everything down, and they have relocated a lot of the menus to the bottom of the display instead of at the top. Overall, I like what Samsung is doing with their stock apps. We'll see a similar design with the notification panel and quick settings where the icons appear much larger, flatter, and simpler in appearance. When you expand the quick settings, you'll see they get shifted much further down on the display and the brightness toggle is on the bottom of the screen, which is way easier to reach with your finger. Going into the settings, you'll see a similar story where the settings header is massive and takes up almost half the screen. The icons next to each settings topic are small, flat, and simple. One thing I noticed is that there are no additional drop-down menus inside each subcategory. Uh, for example, stock Android tries to simplify each setting by only surfacing the most popular settings, forcing you to expand the settings even more to reveal more options. I kind of like how Samsung didn't keep with that layout as you get all of the settings options without having to tap the screen again and search for things. Samsung even recommends settings via big blue bubbles if you can't find what you're looking for. The edge panel has been updated to add support for a new grid at the bottom of the screen that will reveal all of the different panels you have. So that way you don't have to swipe through every panel. You can just use the grid to jump to a precise panel of information. Now, one of the biggest new features of One UI is Samsung's new system wide night mode that basically turns the entire S9 Plus dark. The settings are dark, the notification panel is dark, the phone dialer is dark. All Samsung apps work with this mode, which is awesome. It should be easier on the eyes and it should help save battery life as Samsung uses OLED panels. We also have gestures for navigation, which can be activated via the quick settings here. It's uh, gonna be very similar to the gesture-based navigation we've seen in stock Android Pie and even the iPhone 10, where you swipe up from the bottom center of the screen to go home swipe up from the bottom left to go back, and swipe up from the bottom right to open up the overview tray, which, as you can see, is now flowing right to left as opposed to bottom to top. To multitask, you have to tap the top of the application in the overview tray and tap on open in split screen view. You no longer press on the entire card itself for better or for worse, it's just different. And you can swipe the home button right to switch between your two most recent applications and keep sliding back and forth to switch to an even older application. The emojis have been updated, but that's a change made in Android 9.0 Pi that was infused with One UI. There's a device care setting now available that has been seriously cleaned up, but it's just about the same thing as device maintenance, which we've seen in the previous update. We do have uh, more settings than before, including auto optimization and auto restart options. The auto restart option is kind of neat in that it'll automatically restart the phone at a specified time to help improve performance. I don't know about you, but I don't turn my phone off at night like you should. It just stays on all the time. Uh, a simple restart can do a lot to improve performance, surprisingly. The camera app has been refined. The settings is moved to the left-hand side and we'll see Samsung's bubble-based design elements here. There is now a dedicated video mode, which I really enjoy as you can frame the shot before pressing record. And we'll see that the main camera modes have been shifted down towards the bottom of the screen, making it easier to press with one hand. A neat hidden trick is you can press and drag the shutter button anywhere on the viewfinder to make it easier to take a photo, depending on your environment. 
There are different aspect ratios to choose from up top and other settings like a timer and flash. Gesture-based navigation controls are available too, like before, so you can swipe left and right to toggle between different modes and swipe up and down to switch between the front and rear facing cameras. There's also this new mode called last mode that will remember the last mode you used in the camera app. So when you boot up the camera app, it'll be ready for you right where you left off. That's pretty cool. There's also a new lift to wake feature that mirrors the race to wake feature in iOS. Basically how it works is if you have your phone on a flat surface and you pick it up, it'll light up the display and show you your notifications. That simple. Apparently you can view up to 2000 calls in the recent section of your phone, which is up from the 500 limit with Samsung's older software. With a new One UI update, you might also notice an improved performance, maybe some smoother animations, and the battery life might even be better. In my opinion, if you're on the fence about updating, I'd say go for it. There are some tweaks that I don't like, such as the multitasking tray that flows from right to left, but there are some other features that easily make up for that, like the excellent dark mode and gesture-based navigation controls that free up more screen real estate. Also, since Samsung has included a security patch with this update, you really should update your phone so that it's as secure as possible. Let me know your thoughts on Samsung's new One UI skin. What do you like or dislike about it? Let us know in a comment down below. As always, I'm BoHD from PhoneDog.com. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you right back here in the next one. See ya.